Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video we are going to cover Xur for October 1st. He is up here in Watcher's Grave, and I am uploading this video about nine and a half hours late because the podcast this morning almost happened, and then I managed to spill a giant cup of water into my computer, and somehow it lives. So I will, some of you guys saw me post about that, um, it's alive right now and I honestly have no idea how, but let's talk about Xur, that's why you're here, let's see what he's got. Alright, so the exotic weapon is going to be hard light, and if for some reason you do not own this weapon, please buy it. Uh, barrier weapons are going to be auto rifles only, except like intrinsic exotics like Ariana's Val, and this one is pretty amazing because rounds fired from this weapon have reduced damage fall off, so range is actually going to be much more manageable. When you get the catalyst, it's also even farther, I'm pretty sure. Overpenetrate, ricochet off hard surfaces, and if you ricochet something, it will actually do more damage, which you usually don't plan for, but it's just a bonus. Really good benefit for anything related to shields, though, if you do use this in Lost Sectors or Nightfalls. Anything with barrier weapons, you may as well bring this with you because it can do arc, solar, and void, and it doesn't really matter what you're facing. So it's a good thing to break any type of shield. Also, it's going to be your barrier weapon, kind of a go-to for this entire season, which is going to be six months long. So if you don't have it, please, please buy it. For the Hunter, we have Shards of Galanor, and the perk here is pretty straightforward. Hits and kills with Blade Barrage will return super energy after the super ends. So when you throw out all your knives with Blade Barrage and you're kind of two waves, you're going to get a decent amount of super energy back, depending on what you kill, and it will cap at about 50%. So if you like Blade Barrage, you want to get a chunk of that back, this is kind of your go-to. Uh, you've got 13 mobility, not bad for a hunter. 9 in resilience, meh. Recovery of 9 could be higher. Discipline, not really exactly related to discipline, so that's probably okay. You've got 17 in intellect and 12 in strength. Overall, not a bad roll. Um, high mobility, high intellect, high strength, that's not bad. If the recovery was higher and the resilience was kind of spread to other stats, you'd be looking pretty good. But generally, actually not a bad roll, just for the fact that you have high intellect alone, decent strength, decent mobility. Not a bad one for hunters. You might have a better stat roll, but if you don't have it, it's a good one to pair with Blade Barrage. For the Titans, we've got the Crest of Alpha Lupi. So this one is Survival Well for a perk. Generate an additional orb of power from supers and an, a healing pulse when Barricade is activated. So it's a good way for sharing orbs with your teammates, especially if you're doing a bubble Titan. Definitely a good way to help give those orbs to your teammates. And also that healing pulse with Barricade. This is a very survival kind of team-based exotic. Not a bad one. Um, 62 for total stat roll. We've got 10 on mobility. It's kind of wasted for what this is trying to do. But you do have 14 resilience, 8 recovery, 8 discipline, 9 intellect, and 13 strength. I would tweak some of those a little bit, but a general use 62 stat on a, you know, general use exotic for just survivability. Not bad. Stats definitely could be better, but if you don't have it, it's not a bad one to throw in your collections with that stat roll. For the Warlock, we've got the Sun Bracers. Uh, perk here is increases the duration of solar grenades, and solar melee kills grant unlimited solar grenade energy for a brief time. Usually you can get off about five solar grenades. Um, not too shabby, actually. Now, for mobility here, you've got 13. It's okay. Resilience of 16. Very high and kind of wasted in Warlock, paired with three in recovery, which is literally like the Warlock stat. If these were swapped, I'd say this is fantastic. As these are as they as they sit right now, not really that great. I mean, discipline 12, intellect 14, those aren't bad, but the fact that resilience is high and recovery is low is literally the opposite you want for a warlock. So if you don't have it, it can be good to try out the functionality, but you can still find a better stat roll. All right, so the weapons. First, we've got Dire Promise. This one is actually a pretty solid looking roll. Uh, 140s are pretty good, but this Dire always has felt even pretty good to me, and I'm not usually like the best hand cannon expert. Swashbuckler, never a bad thing. You get that melee kill. It's already fully stacked to five. The kill starts stacking up. Auto loading holster, if you pair this with other weapons potentially, also a good thing. You've got high caliber rounds or light mag, and you've also got sure shot and hit mark. Decent hand cannon roll. If you say do a bow, switch over to hand cannon for a finish, you know it's always loaded. You've definitely got some options here. If you don't have a dire promise, there are much worse rolls to start off with than this one. Got a couple pulse rifles. First one, we've got the GN7 pulse rifle. Outlaw's never a bad thing. You've got flared magwell for a little stability, a little reload, a little range, re uh, handling. Not bad. I don't love full auto. I know some people do. It's really kind of a preference. But for me, if there are other perks that could go here that would give me more benefit besides just holding down the trigger, that would be my preference. So overall, this one's only okay. But if you need an arc pulse rifle for some reason in the future, at least throw one of these in your vault. It's not the worst. 
The other pulse rifle we have is the Last Perdition. This one is actually looking pretty good. You've got under pressure, so as you get lower, if you get that kill, you can turn around and use kill clip. You've got tactical mag, which is always kind of a very optimal choice. You've got short or medium zoom scope with a range masterwork as well. That's a pretty good looking Last Perdition, I gotta be honest. So if you don't have a void pulse rifle for some reason that you love, this is actually a pretty solid one. So definitely pick this one up if you need that void pulse rifle or you just want a decent pulse rifle for PvP. This is gonna be pretty reasonable. 7 Surf seven CQC, you've got snapshot sights, which most people probably don't even use on a shotgun. Auto-loading holsters, not bad. Light mags, not bad. You've got corkscrew rifling for a little bit of range and handling. These aren't bad overall, always making sure your shotgun's ready to go. People probably wouldn't be, like, dying for snapshot sights on a shotgun, I don't think. Sniper, yes. Shotgun, probably not. Hollow Words, I've never really been a huge fan of this one. It's a precision, so it's that mid-charge time. You've got Disruption Break which makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage. If for some reason you break a shield and don't kill them, they're going to be easier to kill. Lead from gold, if you do pick up heavy, not really a big perk in PvP. You have accelerated coils or particle repeater, so you can definitely get that you know medium impact, solid stability here. Decent range, decent handling. Kind of figure out what you want to pair it all with. But you've got a pretty stable fusion rifle if you want one. I don't think this is anything like a god roll, though. Behringer's Memory, a grenade launcher that I wish I could ever find a good roll on, and this is not really one either. Shield Disorient, meh. Quick Draw, probably not that great. Alloy Casing is not bad for increased reload load speed. Overall, I wouldn't get too excited about this grenade launcher. Friendly out here, we've got the Keening. This is always a decent uh, sidearm. Well, Well-rounded grip, reliable, sturdy, 16 bullets, pretty straightforward. You've got Wellspring, so you're going to actually recharge your abilities. Uh, you've got Moving Target, and you've got Ricochet Round, so your stability is going to get really high. Throw that one on there. you got Full Bore. You can crank stability, or you can keep the range kind of where it's at. Reload Speed. All in all, that's a pretty reasonably well-rounded side sidearm. Not a god roll, but a decent one, I think, for sure. So that is your weapons. Let's talk about the Legendary Armor. We've got 63 for the Titan, so high resilience. Decent intellect and strength. That's not bad. I'd love to see some recovery in there more than two. But if you're looking for a big resilience build, for example, this is a pretty solid one. 62 as well. High discipline, high mobility. Very weird stat spikes there. This one I don't love. 64. We've got mobility, resilience, intellect, and strength. Not horrible. Again, we're getting away from that recovery build, but maybe that's not your purpose. And then 63. Recovery, discipline, intellect, and the fall down is mobility for me. But overall, those three in the middle, not bad. Overall, if you've got some decent options, if you just need something that has 60-ish stats for a Titan, these aren't bad. All right, for the Warlock, we've got 62 with low resilience. Never a bad thing for a Warlock. Mobility, recovery, discipline, a little low on intellect, strength. Not a bad, well-rounded roll and not wasted on resilience. I've definitely seen worse. Wow. Okay, you got 63. Now, the high resilience, again, as I said, not really where I'd love to see it, but you got 16 in recovery and 26 in intellect. That's, I wouldn't miss out on this one. I mean, resilience, you always need a little bit of it, but generally, like, high recovery and high intellect, if that resilience was disciplined, this would be like a god roll, but just the high recovery and intellect alone, that's a crap ton of intellect. 60, okay, now, again, we're talking, we got high recovery, 18, intellect, 14, discipline, 12. These are solid rolls for the Warlock. Boots, not so much. High mobility, decent intellect and discipline, low resilience, low recovery. But man, the helmet, the robes, maybe the gauntlets, but these two alone are fantastic. Let's see if the hunters can pull something out. And finally for the hunters, we've got 62, recovery, discipline, intellect, and 9 mobility. Damn. For a 62, that's about as efficient as you can ask for. 62 here, on the other hand, very high in strength, high in resilience, not great chest. Uh, 59, not even a 60, and 59 there. Really, really solid gauntlets. Everything else is kind of crap. And that wraps this up. As I said, I am insanely lucky right now to be even making this video for you guys because of what happened to my computer. A lot of dismantling, cleaning parts. Just don't ever spill water in your computer and make sure you keep it in a place where it's not possible. But thank you guys very much. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below. If you have a comment about anything, maybe a good thought about a legendary role that I may have missed, throw that in the comments as well. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the alert bell. If you guys want to support me, you can do that as a member here by hitting join. And also you can find me on Patreon as well. You guys can find me on Twitter at Ebontis and then over on twitch.tv for streaming over there or streaming right here on YouTube. Thank you guys. Have a good one. And no last word this week. We'll have it next week.